Hello everyone. This game is from round two from the Gibraltar uh, Chess Festival. And with the white pieces, we have uh, GM Vasily Ivanchuk. And with the black pieces, an international master with the last name uh, Kobo, spelled K-O-B-O. -O. So if anybody knows how to pronounce that correctly, uh, please leave it in the uh, comment section below. All right, so the Van Chuck opened um, E4, and Kobo International Master played E6. And ba and uh, by the way, his rating is 2482. Uh, Kobo with the black pieces, and a Van Chuck here it says 2752. So we have um, almost 300 points uh, rating difference here. All right, so we have about uh you know 270 uh difference in, uh 270 points difference in rating so Ivan Chuck is definitely the favorite so here we have a french defense 4e6 d4 d5 there's your french knight c3 knight f6 this is uh the classical variation Bishop g5, and there's uh, many ways to go from here. <clears throat> Bishop e7, e5, knight f, d7. Then you have bishop takes, or you have this known this uh, h4 known as the Albin Chatard attack. And you get this kind of stuff, and basically uh, black sap sacrifices a pawn. Excuse me, white sacrifices a pawn for open lines against the king. <clears throat> couple of games in that but in this game instead of bishop e7 we saw a d takes e d, d takes e4 which is the, a normal uh, variation I think it's called Burns variation actually so knight takes e4 and now bishop e7 and then we have a whole bunch of uh, trades bishop takes f6 and G takes F6. Now this is specifically called the burn variation. And um, Alexander Morozevich uh, played this variation also. And there's a similar variation in the Carol Khan called the Bronstein variation. Which looks exactly like this. Except the pawn is on C6. I'll just run that by you real quick if I can remember off the top of my head. I think, uh, let's see. Carol Khan memory right uh, yeah and then instead of taking here which is normally take here and this is called the uh, Bronstein Larson um, is it Bronstein Larson variation I think it's just called the Bronstein variation it might be Larson Bronstein Larson I'm not sure and you had the same idea is um, utilize this open G file to initiate an attack against the king and then you also have this pawn preponderance in the center also so just note the similarity between this line and the Carol Khan right it's Bronstein variation and what you have here in the game the burn variation notice this pawn is not on c6 because it's a French but the ideas are similar is that black is playing uh, attacking chess here in a dynamic manner uh, he basically wants to bring his rook to the g-file and put pressure on the uh, the white king down there these pawns are excellent because they do um, a similar job that the pawns do uh, in the Sicilian in that they guard these central squares beautifully and it's hard for white to be able to use use them. You see, these pawns have a lot of influence here, so it's hard to, you know, jump around the e5 or g5 and stuff like that, to initiate some type of attack. Of course, the downside is that uh, these pawns can become uh, weak. You know, but that will be later on. Black is going for his, um, you know, advantage right now and into the middle game. So knight f3 from Ivan Chuck, a6, a4, trying to limit any 
expansion on the queen side f5 knocking the knight out of the uh, center and notice we see the e5 square right is vulnerable now but black has the f6 square again it's very risky because as pawns move there's always weaknesses left behind but if black wants, he can always guard his e5 square with f6. He just has to be careful of the exposure of his uh, king on the light squares. <clears throat> so knight c3 from Ivan Chuck. Bishop f6. So the bishop um, kind of takes control of looking over the e5 square instead of this pawn pushing up at this moment. Queen d2. So seem like uh, Ivan Chuck is showing some indication of wanting to castle queenside. But it's a little more riskier since he's played a4. Because this gives uh, black an opportunity to open up lines over there if he castles. Queen d6. And again, this is one of the disadvantages of playing a4 is that b4 often becomes weak. G4 by Ivan Chuck. Bishop D7. Now, F takes G4 is playable, but Black didn't want to have to deal with Knight E4. Although after Queen E7, and let's just say Knight takes F6, Queen takes F6, Knight E5. Seems like Black can manage, but um, this position might get a little tough for Black later on. I mean, this, um, you know, it's already hard for him to develop. For instance, Knight D7 here, you got Knight takes G4, Queen H4, and Knight E3. And say Knight F6. And I think Black has untangled himself, so so I think he could he could have taken that, but it's understandable that he's trying to stick to his game plan, keeping this square under um, under observance. So instead, he just keeps developing. He plays <clears throat> Bishop D7. <clears throat> piece is not protected so Ivan Chuck rushes in with Queen H6 Bishop E7 and now G takes F5 <clears throat> E takes F5 so black's pawns are destroyed here we we kind of see Ivan Chuck kind of picking black apart now goes into an end game and all black really has to show for his efforts here is a bishop here, <clears throat> but the game is far from over. Although black is at a slight disadvantage due to this uh, horrendous pawns, he's still, you know, there's still plenty of uh, chess to be made. He's not in dire straits right now. Ivan Chuck castles queen side. Knight c6. Bishop c4. And this kind of hinders black from being on the castle queen side because this pawn has to be taken care of. So I am Kobo just decides to stick his king on f8. And that way he can play his rook to e8 if he wants and then put the other rook on the g file. And solve all those problems immediately. So King F8 and King B1 is played. King B1 is like a standard move in these positions because, you know, sometimes you're worried about some kind of checks, you know. But um, I think in this position, I wouldn't have played that until I had to play it because it's not like, you know, you're going to get made or anything. But it's, a, it's such a standard move. I think a lot of players just play that almost automatically. But you have to be cognizant of, of wasting time sometimes with your moves and perhaps it was prudent to I don't know maybe contest 
one of these open files with excuse me one of these open files with the rooks maybe rook hd1 you know okay so there's rook g8 and now we see knight e5 attacking the bishop bishop's unprotected Bishop takes e5. D takes e5. Bishop is still unprotected. And then bishop e6 is played. Now, knight takes e5 is possible also. Because this is attacked as well as this. So, for instance, <clears throat> let's say if bishop came back there, then bishop c6. Then I don't know. Should say he tried that. Then you have stuff like rook takes d1, rook takes d1, knight f3, and you have to be careful. You know what kind of threats are in the building. Instead, Kobo played bishop e6, which is a respectable move. Iron Chuck plays bishop d5. See rook g4, b3, king e7, king b2, rook a g8, rook d2, rook d8, rook hd1, and now black just grabs the central pawn. Bishop takes b7. And this is designed to exploit the position of the bishop here after capturing here. Ivan Chuck takes, and there it is, rook b8. Again, opposition. Bishop cannot move on uh, b8. Now d5 check. Bishop takes d5, rook takes d5. Attacking the pawn. Now, black strikes back with rook takes b7. And <clears throat> now we have an interesting position here. The positions are uh, almost mirror images of each other. <laughs> the pawn structure, that is. Except this pawn would have to be on h3. Then it would match almost uh, perfectly, <laughs> you know, the pawn structure of black. Black has this, this ugly pawn, these ugly pawns here, and then white has these here. So black has done, in my opinion, a good job in um, staying active enough to um, turn the position into a relatively equal position. Um, Ivan Tuck somewhere has went wrong and lost it, lost an advantage that he had earlier. So king f6. Now Ivan Chuck plays rook c5. He's just pressuring the uh, weaknesses in the position. Notice how the activity is this rook. Keeping an eye on these pawns. This rook cannot move now. However, black reminds Ivan Chuck that hey man, you have weaknesses also. So he attacks the h pawn, h2 pawn. So rather than defend, Ivan Chuck says, you know what? I'm going to attack. And he just goes berserk here. And now he's attacking three pawns with one rook. And that's uh, that's good uh, economics right there. <laughs> he's, he's getting the full use out of this rook right now on F6. So rook B6 is played. And Ivan Chuck decides to take the pawn on f5. He ca he decides to cast his chips in. Now, I was kind of perplexed why he didn't just play rook. You know, take the pawn like pawn with check first. Then after say king c8, then take the pawn. You know that makes sense to me. 
So I don't have a good answer for why he didn't do, do it like that. Because after Rook takes f5, see, after, and after Rook takes f5, black um, could have played f6. So I don't know if these guys were in time trouble or, or what. It looks like it. I'm looking at the clocks here, and it looks like they, they were in severe time trouble because that's like a real obvious looking move to me is Rook takes f7, check, king back, and then... You know, just snatch the um, material. Instead, he played rook takes f5. Black could have just played f6. And then how how are you getting this pawn? And this pawn on f h2 is still attacked. Okay, so the game went on. Right? Just wanted to point those out. So now, black plays this move. Right? He puts a double attack here on c4. That's understandable, but this is still... Um, on priest now he takes and we can say that white has a big advantage here you know he just up material he's up two pawns even though these double pawns value is somewhat uh, lessened this pawn right here is a killer this f pawn there it is f4 check the rook takes h2 Rook E8 check from Ivan Chuck. He doubles up. Yeah, he's basically a uh, threatening mate. <laughs> and if you, you know, check here. And then uh, the king goes to A7. And then the other rook comes in. So basically, you know, he's threatening to end the game. This gives the king, this move gives the king a little escape hatch. And there, unfortunately, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk has lost <laughs> lost the game on time, which is uh, it's not it's unbelievable for most grandmasters, but for not for Vasily Ivanchuk. Um, so he's done that he's done that before in the, in the past, but he lost to international master on time. Um. So that was just incredible. So in this position, White is clearly winning. Um, you know, after Rook B8, King C6, and uh, Rook A8, for instance. And it's just, uh, you know, he lost some move 39. Um, you know, and just, uh, you know, it's just uh, so, so, something else. You know, great, 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 great chess play. Can't take that away from him. But, uh, but time reared its ugly head and uh, that was it so anyway good game played by black black had his chances you know you know he's almost 300 points um behind i've been talking the ratings and he had his chances he kind of misplayed here and again like i said this looks like a time scramble thing by ivan tuck because after f6 it's it's kind of like the game you know black has uh net then black can play this idea Perhaps with Rook uh, C6. You know. So something like that I guess. So Black played. You know Black play, played pretty good. He made he made the opening look. You know. You know this is a dynamic opening for Black. Like if you're interested. You know in studying. This um. Just burn variation or more. I think it's called burn Morozevich variation now. Cause sometimes they name rename the opening after players. You know that you know modern players. But I know it used to be called the burn opening when I started playing chess. But then I know Morozevich took it up and have some good games uh, with it. So look it up sometimes. It's uh, pretty interesting. You know, a nice alternative. But. Yeah, he played pretty good here. Like the opening, you know, the opening is pretty, you know, pretty much up for grabs. It wasn't like White had a big tremendous advantage out of the opening and stuff. So, good choice. Obviously, he might have caught Ivan Chuck off guard and forced Ivan Chuck to think about everything. And therefore, he got in time trouble. And, um, you know, 
The guy got guy won a game, so this is a game that he you know tell his friends about that he you know he beat Vasily uh, Vanchuk. So anyway, as usual, like and subscribe, leave your comments down below, and I'll see you soon.